Frank Zappa once said that the only difference between a cult and a religion was the amount of real estate owned. But does a cult have to be religious? I don't think it does. I think cultishness can be less organised and more personal. Health and lifestyle movements like paleo, crossfit and veganism definitely aren't cults. But sometimes people can get culty about them. People can get culty about One Direction, or football, or coffee, or yoga. I'm Lily Wilkinson. Let's talk about sects. Don't get me wrong, I like yoga. I've been doing yoga since I was in kindergarten. Yoga is relaxing. Yoga is all about peace and balance. Until it isn't. Bikram yoga isn't a cult, but founder Bikram Chowdhury has a lot in common with the typical charismatic cult leader. He runs a multinational beast of a company that has schools in over 200 countries. His 26 yoga poses are copyrighted and the company is highly litigious, demolishing small yoga studios who offer hot yoga but are not official Bikram franchises. Chowdhury himself is not quite what I picture when I think of a spiritual guru. He owns a fleet of 40 luxury cars, leads his classes wearing nothing but speedos and a million dollar diamond encrusted watch, and claims to be more powerful than Buddha and Jesus. He also says stuff like this. I have balls like atom bombs, two of them, a hundred megatons each. Nobody fucks with me. Chowdhury claims Bikram yoga can heal anything. He claims to have cured Richard Nixon's phlebitis. He also claims to have worked with the Beatles in 1959, despite the fact that Chowdhury would have been 13 in 1959 and the Beatles didn't form till 1960. According to reports from trainees, Chowdhury's teacher training sessions read like classic charismatic leader controlling behaviour. Food, water and sleep are restricted. Trainees must be granted permission to use the bathroom. Chowdhury has been the subject of a number of sexual harassment and assault lawsuits. Trainee Jill Lawler claimed that Chowdhury assaulted her on multiple occasions, declaring, I'm dying. I need you to save me. If I don't have sex, I will die. You are saving my life. You are helping me. Chowdhury's own lawyer, now ex-lawyer, Minakshi Jaffa Bodden, has also sued him claiming to have been a victim herself of the yoga guru's severe, ongoing, pervasive and offensive conduct, and witness to his sexist, racist, homophobic behaviour. In January 2016, a jury ruled against Chowdhury, awarding Jaffa Bodden over $7 million in punitive damages. There is a recurring pattern of yoga instructors getting a bit carried away with themselves. Like former leader of Anasara Yoga, John Friend, who has been accused of running a secret Wiccan coven called the Blazing Soul of Flames, made up of Anasara employees who perform magical sex rituals and defund other employees' benefit plans. Aum Shinrikyo began its life in 1984 as a yoga and meditation class for elite university students, run by Shoko Asahara in his one-bedroom apartment in Shibuya, Tokyo. By 1992, Asahara had announced that he was the second coming of Christ and published a doctrine that was a mishmash of Buddhism, Hinduism, yoga, the Book of Revelation, the prophecies of Nostradamus, Asimov's Foundation Trilogy, and various popular anime and manga. Asahara claimed the world would end in 1997, when World War III would bring about nuclear Armageddon, destroying all of humanity except, of course, the members of Orm. In 1993, Orm purchased a remote sheep station in Western Australia where they manufactured nerve agent sarin and VX gas. There's also a weird and somewhat unlikely theory that they tested a nuclear weapon there. The cult had recruited two ex-Soviet nuclear engineers, and on May 28, 1993, a large-scale seismic disturbance was detected in the area, 170 times more powerful than a mining explosion. Locals reported seeing a flash in the sky. Maybe it was a media strike? Maybe not. The gases were used in a number of assassinations and attacks, killing dozens of people and injuring hundreds more. These attacks culminated in the Tokyo subway attack on March 20, 1995, where Orm members released sarin on five trains in the Tokyo subway system, killing 13, seriously injuring 54, and affecting up to 6,000 others. Police raided Orm headquarters, finding explosives, LSD and meth labs, millions of dollars in US cash and gold, a Russian military helicopter, biological agents, prisoners in cells, and materials to make enough sarin to kill 4 million people. A further attack was thwarted in Shinjuku Station when police discovered a burning paper bag containing a hydrogen cyanide device that could have killed 10,000 commuters. Hundreds were arrested and Asahara was sentenced to death, although his execution has not yet been carried out. Orm Shinrikyo still exists, although it's been split into two groups, one known as Aleph and the other known as Hiraki no Wa, 
or the Circle of Rainbow Light. Both groups are heavily monitored. Here in my hometown of Melbourne, we had The Family, led by Anne Hamilton Byrne, one of the few female cult leaders. She too began her journey as a yoga instructor, and she too declared herself the second coming of Christ. Many members of her group were psychiatrists at a private psychiatric hospital in Kew, and they used LSD and electroconvulsive therapy to recruit new members. Between 1968 and 1975, Hamilton Byrne acquired 14 children and infants, changing their names, issuing them fake birth certificates, dyeing their hair, and claiming them all as her own biological children. Some were the natural children of other members, but many came from dodgy adoptions arranged by the lawyers, doctors, and social workers who were members of the family. It's claimed that the children were isolated on a rural property and subjected to severe abuse, including beatings, starvation diets, and frequent dosings with psychiatric and psychotropic drugs. One of these children, Sarah Hamilton Byrne, attempted to rebel and was expelled from the group in 1987. With the help of a private investigator, she was instrumental in bringing about a police raid that removed all the children from the family. Anne Hamilton Byrne fled the country, but was arrested in the US in 1993. She's currently living in a nursing home with advanced dementia. The family as a group still exists. Thanks for watching Let's Talk About Sects. References for this episode can be found down there, and if you want to know more about my forthcoming culty novel, you can click there. Join me next week when I'll be talking about little green men, evil galactic overlords, and how eating McDonald's can help you survive the apocalypse. Mm -hmm.